Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Good evening everybody, Militiaman and Crew here tonight. It is Monday once again, and there's plenty of good information that we have um, coming our way. I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised, but look, sometimes we'll... I've, as you guys all know, I like to go back a little bit in time and history to see uh, where we are today. And I think you'll find that uh, some of the biggest players uh, in Iraq and the United States have uh, gotten together this year and they state so. There is the Joint Statement on Iraq-U.S. Higher Coordinating Committee. That's the HCC. Basically, what's going on here is that the United States and Iraq has, has gotten together and with some high teams, and they're talking about, uh, in my words, a roadmap of where they're headed and where they are today. And I think that is really powerful because uh, it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over it. It's going to be a little lengthy, but the fact remains is, is that um, when you understand it and you look at who's involved, you're going to get a... A feeling of like, wow, really? This is it. this is bigger than we ever thought. This is a little bit more information than I ever dreamed of. This is not what we're getting on everyday uh, news sites and um, other professionals out there doing what I do. Um, I do it maybe a little bit differently. Um, I might be a little bit, uh, um, uh, I don't know, analytical, <laughs> and uh, instead of straight to the point. Uh, sometimes I am, but I try to give it in layman's terms the best that I can. But some of this stuff is really even complex for me, but it's good. It says the delegation of the Republic of Iraq is led by the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Faoud Hussein and the delegation of the United States led by Secretary of State of Anthony J. Blinken, who has co-chaired a higher coordinating uh, committee, which is the HCC. It says that they are in accordance with the 2008 Strategic Framework, uh, which is an agreement and for a relationship of friendship and cooperation between the United States of America and the Republic of Iraq, and that's called the Strategic Frame Agreement, or SFA. The delegations reaffirmed their determination to deepen the strategic relationship across the full range of bilateral issues for the sake of their respective national interests and their shared interest in the regional stability. And we all know that that's uh, an ongoing process and a very key component, having regional stability um, is a big thing. I know that there's been some problems in, uh, in, the, in the area over the last uh, month or two, but hey, th at this stage, Iraq is still, uh, still s relatively stable. A few little incidences, uh, but I think they're going to be manageable. It looks like uh, this meeting, uh, and remember, this, this meeting that I'm talking about, I said it goes back uh, to earlier in the year, and, and that goes back as far back as February 15th, 2023. And again, uh, to me, it's a roadmap. It says, this meeting marked the first HCC focused on economic cooperation, the energy sector, development, and climate change. And well... As you see, you're going to, if you pay attention, you're going to understand, you're going to, and if you've been following along in your, in your investment, which I believe everybody that's here at this stage of the game should have a very good understanding of where we are and the ongoings. And so when I say some of these things, you'll be able to say, check, done, check, check, check type situation, because basically what I'm going to say here is, in my view, I think almost all of this and then some has been checked or done. Uh, the climate change situation, We're, what do we have today on, that's ongoing? I, I believe it's the COP28 that's ongoing about uh, climate change. And so that is just one item that they talked about in February, and now they're talking about it today, uh, Iraq's included in that. So it says um, a signing of maturing strategic partnership, which is under the SFA that I mentioned. The Iraqi delegation included high-level representatives from the Council of Representatives, the Central Bank of Iraq, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from Iraq, the Ministry of Oil, the Ministry of Planning, the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Electricity, the Office of the Prime Minister, uh, the Climate Envoy, the Kurdistan Regional Government. In addition to the Secretary of the State, the U.S. delegation included National Security Advisor Sullivan, 
uh, the USAID administrative power, uh, special uh, special presidential envoy for climate change. I believe that is uh, John Kerry, Deputy Treasury Secretary Adeyemo, the special presidential coordinator for global energy and infrastructure, uh, Hochstein, coordinator for global anti-corruption, uh, National Security Council, Middle East coordinator McGurk, as well as senior officials from the departments of state, treasury, energy, and commerce. So this is all about Iraq. This is all about basically get, getting to that stage of what are they going to be doing? They're going to be doing international commerce. So the U.S. and Iraq delegations uh, shared the view that we're pursuing an ambitious energy independence agenda necessary to maximize Iraq's economic prosperity and safeguard the sovereignty. Well, that's, of course, security and stability and sovereignty is a key focus, obviously, for uh, this country that's going international. So um, they go on to say that the um, they're looking to basically accelerate efforts uh, to capture flared gas. So we know that uh, climate change related uh, to upgrade their natural gas distribution infrastructure uh, and reduce methane leakage regionally and interconnect Iraq's electricity grid. Basically, they're working on modernizing Iraq's electricity infrastructure. And we all know this by by that, the fact that they have already gotten together with the likes of uh, who Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf Cooperation Council, Interconnectivity Authority. So none of this is new. This has all been ongoing, and you're seeing results of that um, in the news as we speak lately. Um, keep in mind, the United States has put in about $1.2 billion for, for those things that I just mentioned to be um, in, the pro in the pipeline over the last five years. Uh, the United States plans to continue to its technical assistance to improve uh, Iraq's water management practices. We know that Iraq's been involved with the WTO. We all know that um, Iraq has been focused on oil for so long, but now they're, they're going into the non-oil sectors. And one of those non-oil sectors um, is going to be exporting uh, extra food stuffs, food security. You see that a lot in the news. So we're going to have to watch that. Uh, they just recently t they spoke about they spoke about 40 different uh, companies um, from the United States U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and who were they? There were companies that were industry leaders with the expertise in gas, uh, gas capture, electricity infrastructure modernization, uh, um, and renewable energies. So they all did this uh, over the, since then, since February. Uh, and even more so in June um, and up to date, okay? Uh, there is what they call a trade and investment framework, which is the TIFA council meeting this year. And, and basically the forum um, is resolving trade concerns and enhancing opportunities for bilateral trade and investment between the two countries. So what are they gonna do? Uh, the United States is gonna follow up with the economic energy investment and climate discussions uh, during these HCC meetings. So we, you see that is a roadmap. And then you think about it, it's like, well, all of those little things I talked about, energy, electricity, food, water, <laughs> trade, bilateral trade, um, I think you're gonna probably find that there's significant uh, wording that's called multilateral trade, multilateral banking, all of these things just show that Iraq, like I tweeted the other day, Iraq's going international. Uh, that's the way I see it, that's my opinion, and I think I'm going to be, I believe I'm gonna be 100% right. Uh, the evidence is, 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 is clear as day, it's clear as day. Uh, here's this next article that I decided to, to throw out you guys, uh, is gonna be help supporting all the things that I've said, because that's what we do with Patreon and Militiamen and crew. Uh, and our Discord chat room is that we bring in the news for everybody to see. They can look at it, read it themselves on their own time, just about 20, 24 seven. But my analysis comes a little bit later because it takes a little time to go over these things. It's, it's uh, time consuming, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, Iraq's president uh, ratifies a record 152 billion budget criticized by the IMF for two rosy of proje projections. So. What I'm gonna to try to paint a picture of is that the IMF 
um, states that, that Iraq's got some problems, um, and then the World Bank suggests that they have a fix, and then we're going to see potentially that there is a fix, and they're they're talking about it. So that's in brief. So that's where we're headed with this, and hopefully um, I can convey it in a in a manner that um, everybody should understand. So uh, look, it says here that there's um, I believe this comes from the World News, and it says uh, the Iraq president on Wednesday approved a record 152 billion budget that Parliament voted on earlier this month and which adds about a half a million public sector jobs. This was on June 21st, 2023. And it goes on and says the approval draft consolidates Baghdad's authority over the oil sector and allocates 12.6% of their revenue to the Kurdish region. And pretty much everybody should know that. That's what they've been bouncing around back and forth, uh, whether it's 12, 4, 12, 6, etc. cetera. Um, in this particular case, back in June, at or around the time that the 23, 24, 25 budget was put into the Gazette and become law. Okay, we haven't seen the disbursements yet, and there's gonna be some turmoil about that over, over time, and we may see a little bit of that today. But the bottom line is, is that the Kurdish local government will be allowed to sell oil and will have to deposit revenue uh, first in a bank account that the officials from the central bank of it, uh, the central central government can monitor. So we all know that if, if you've been studying that uh, there's been a, a little bit of an issue with that. This is June. They said they're thinking about having this done within a couple of weeks. And here we are in December and they haven't done it yet. So you have to ask yourself, well, why in the world haven't they done it yet? Well, obviously, there's probably going to be a uh, evaluation done that's different for what to value their assets. And so that's what we're, we're hoping is is coming in a uh, very, very short term. Uh, it goes on to say that the budget that was approved for 24 and 25 in the same amounts includes substantial spending on increased public wages and investing in construction reconstruction projects that have suffered from years of conflict, da 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 da. It also has provisions raising salaries of public sector employees and the conversion of contracted workers into permanent public employees. And here again, back to the, the, the headline. It's being, this budget is being criticized by the uh, IMF for two rosy of projections, and they give some reasons. It says in this particular situation, it says the budget's rosy revenue projections and more than half a million new positions in the public sector has drawn criticism. What, what they don't tell you is that they're, what they're basing this off of, in my view, is that they're talking about a rentier oil economy. They're not taking into consideration or they're not mentioning the other revenue streams, okay? But we'll just, this is back from June now and there's been things that have transpired since then. Um, it says the International Monetary Fund in a recent report warned uh, against fiscal loosening and a heavy reliance by Baghdad on oil revenues, okay? So they're not telling you about all the taxes and tariffs at the borders, the liquid natural gas, the tourism, the agriculture, minerals, all those things, and that's those things you've been seeing in the news, right? That they're out there and they're being done, okay? And they're doing tenders for uh, many different things. Uh, and so you have to go, wow. So many of these things since February, and now it's June, have been underway all this time to, to do what? To get Iraq to go international. Um, there's a Republic of Iraq document that's put out with plenty of good sources. Uh, I think we talked about this, uh, this particular one uh, a few weeks ago, and probably could have been in late October, early November. But the thing is, the Republic of Iraq put out, uh, or some studies from the World Bank and some others, um, and, and the country of Iraq, talk about the, the, the outlook, the fiscal outlook for Iraq. And I just wanted to say though, they're, they're back to this little bit that says that the approved budget for 23-25 envisions a fiscal expansion that does not address structural vulnerabilities at a time of weaker global growth and heightened oil market uncertainty. The budget, if fully implemented, implemented will result in a large fiscal deficit. Okay, key, key words here large fiscal deficit, 
which would require a sizable financing or loans, right? Need and deplete the buffers accumulated uh, during the previous years of oil's windfalls. In other words, their reserves it would deplete them. It says the composition of the budget for 2023 notably the sharp increase in wage bill so having too many employees right think about the pensioners uh, the retirees and all that stuff that kind of money uh, could be uh, could have a long-term impact by further aggravating budget rigidities this would leave uh, fiscal uh, space for growth enhancing programs no wait I'm sorry it says this would leave little fiscal space for growth enhancing uh, programs in human and phys physical uh, capital. So there's obviously that part of that negativity side from the IMF. But then, then you have the World Bank that comes in and says um, their outlook, it goes on to um, there's expected weakness because of oil, da 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 da. Uh, all of the same, some of the same things, but they go on to say that um, Iraq is basically going to have some changes. And, and they're, they're, they're having expectations because I can go on to like paragraph after paragraph. But the one I want to focus in on is, is that they state that the easing of global commodity prices, the revaluation of the dinar and continued price subsidies are projected to keep inflation in check. So they drop the ball. World Bank drops the ball and su suggests that the easing of global commodity prices, comma, revaluation of the dinar and continued price subsidies are projected to keep inflation in check. Okay, that's one of the main goals of the central bank has been to keep inflation down, have they? According to what we read in, in the news, they have, and they've done that for quite some time. It says, with the project projected decline in oil prices, they projected that prices would come down, but at today's prices, Brent crude oils at $78, WTI $73.26, Basra light crude oil is $85.38, et cetera, et cetera. And they're basing this, these projections on 78.7 uh, per barrel, okay, through 23 to 2025. So right now that's even stable, okay? But it says here, it says that the, uh, with the projected decline in oil prices and the expansionary fiscal policy stance, the fiscal balance is forecast to return to a deficit, like they were saying, and the debt to GDP ratio will increase. But it says an expected influx of imports driven by the dinar revaluation and the significant increase in government expenditures will further weight on the, cur the current account surplus, which had a projected average oil price of 78.7, da da da, which I already, men which I already mentioned. But it's fascinating that they say that the, the, the part here I like the most is says an expected influx of imports driven by the dinar re revaluation. So if you think about it for a minute, if they give the citizens pur purchasing power, are they not going to drive up um, an influx of imports? Because everybody has a little bit more money to maybe buy a new car, uh, buy some new carpets, uh, I don't know, paint their house, build an addition onto their home. <laughs> They're going to have that extra money for those kids, you know? And when they say that, that's, that's a key indicator to me was that uh, I may have overlooked in the past is that it's the, the World Bank has an expectation of influx of imports due to what? Driven by the dinar revaluation. So they're not hiding it. They're not talking about it. That's not ever going to happen. And they're not talking about anything like that. It can't happen. Um, the project to delete the zeros has been on the books for quite some time. And uh, this year in 2023, in July, this stuff was in June. That was at June and October. In July, Al Alak, the central bank governor, said the project to delete the zeros is still exists off the ex currency exchange rate. And that, I think, is, is, um, is fascinating and awesome. So we got to this article today, though, that is talking about the deficit. OK, because we talked about here that the the IMF and even in the World Bank a little bit would suggest that, A, there's there could be a deficit. It should be uh, to be a concern. But um, the World Bank is looking to suggest that there's a, a fix for that. And that fix, in my view, could be 
what is a revaluation because things become cheaper for them when they do that. So it says the budget this year was not fully dispersed. Well, here's the article the headline it says the parliamentary finance. OK. No deficit in the budgets of the next two years and greater allocations after the elections. So they're saying that they're not, they don't have any deficit now. So what did they do? World Bank. Well, IMF World Bank ish <laughs> is suggesting there, there could be deficits, but there's a fix for it. But here they're saying the next two years and greater allocations for the elections. Um, there's no deficit. I mean, that's pretty fascinating. It's awesome. So wait, but the article is, is, is kind of hard to read because they that's just the way they do this. The budget this year was not fully dispersed, but the allocations of ongoing projects were launched and spent and that spending reached 117 trillion dinars, noting that the parallels of 23 and 24 have no deficit. Well, firstly, uh, ongoing projects were funded probably from the 2022 budget. There was a uh, surplus for that and they were rolled over. So w when they say spent, I'm not so sure they're talking about the 2023 budget, um, but the parallels of the 23 and 24 budget have no deficit. They're two separate components. Not easy to understand, but again, th we're going to have to watch and see how this goes. But I have a strong feeling that what they're talking about is 117 trillion dinars, you guys. That's all the money that they've ever printed is is something to that effect, whether it's 97 to 120 trillion. Um, their whole budget spending reached 100, their whole currency outlay. Um, I don't think so. Not at 1310. I don't think they could afford to do that or, or will keep doing it. It says here the committee had a meeting with the budget department, the Ministry of Finance. And what has happened so far is the launch of allocations for governance and ministries. They, they have a little parentheses that says, but not in the required form. So I'm not really sure exactly what that means. Is that the required form something in the past or not? I'm not sure. But they go on to say, noting that what was spent during the first six months amounted to 47 trillion dinars. And they go on and say the second six months, which we're in now, uh, will reach the spending rate of more than 70 trillion. And thus, we do not have a budget deficit. I'm not so sure that makes any sense whatsoever. But the bottom line is that they do not have a budget deficit. And yet, they say, there will be a surplus, stressing that next year will be without a deficit. I Really, I would suggest you read the article, <laughs> take a screenshot if you have to, and then uh, go find it, and then think about it. Break it down, cut it up a little bit, and try to figure out what that what they're saying. And you're going to see that, obviously, what I said that the World Bank potentially suggests that uh, they have a fix, and there's they're mentioning in their report a revaluation because of an expectation of increased imports. So okay, well now they're saying there isn't going to be a a problem. There is going to be no deficit for 23 and 24. Why? Well, they're going to have a surplus. OK, they say the allocations will be launched more for the provinces and ministries to implement the projects, which will lead to advancement of the government program presented by the prime minister. So if the allocations will be launched, does that mean distribution? Does that mean they're going to be distributing money from the 23 budget? That's going to be a different valuation to be able to uh, accommodate for uh, to implement the projects because they're going to be quite expensive. They'll be far cheaper at a different exchange rate. So uh, ultimately, they're saying it will advance the government program. And we all know that monetary and economic reforms are part of the development road project, the investment budget of 2023, 24, 25. So all of these things uh, you pretty much can't argue with it. It says here that the Ministry of Labor announces a launch of a pension salaries for workers next Wednesday. They're going to do what? They're going to disperse money? Really? Wednesday's what? The 6th. OK. What other things are happening that we've talked about on the 6th? Uh, I think we talked about the. Um, I know we got three or four things and I'll go from memory. Yeah, the 6th is got we have the uh, WTO procurements uh, meeting. And we all know that what's what's that about? It's in re reflection of Iraq, uh, the sixth 
uh, procurements and spending money. Then we have the salaries, and what we're, we're going to be we're reading here today is going to be um, about paying the pensioners uh, and the retirees. And then also we know that the uh, a final U.S. dollar auction um, in the country of Iraq uh, looks like the way that it reads. It's implementation date starts on the 6th, same day. That's three, one, two, three, right? And possibly goes through the 20th, whether it has to go through the whole 20th or not is to be determined. But this particular article, it says, in view of the implementation of the Workers' Retirement and Social Security Law, number 18 of 2023, it has been decided to disperse the pension salaries for the month of December 2023, which is on Wednesday, 12-6, in the afternoon so disperse the pension and that sounds like to me that they're going to uh, disperse money out of the 2023 budget law we're gonna find out if that if that's what it turns out it says yesterday Sunday December 3rd Prime Minister Muhammad Shia al Sadani announced the entry into force of the retirement and Social Security law and I would highly recommend everybody take a peek at that and see see where you stand um, a little snippet from the parliamentary finance it says that no deficit in the budgets of the next two years and greater allocations after the elections. al Kasimi added that the second six months will reach the spending rate of more than 70 trillion. Da 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 da. But it says what? The main point is surplus and next year will be without a deficit. And there you go. So you got people saying it's not a good thing. And what did they do? They have a fix for it. it says the ec economic expert identifies a number of treatments for the parallel market and um, that is going to be because they have um, a treatment. It says there are a number of treatments to solve the issue of the rise in the dollar exchange rates in the parallel market. We all know that it's an illegal market. It says that there are major limitations and obstacles to its stability, especially since neighboring countries play a role in this aspect. So we know that there's an illegal market, then they've got to fix it, and what are they going to do? They have this particular sentence is fascinating. It says he stated the treatments cannot be solved by force and yet are used when needed. <laughs> so you go, really? So there's there's something you can do, but you're not you're not gonna do it. They cannot be solved by force, but if they have to, they will. <laughs> I think that's how it reads. So it says, quote, treatments cannot be solved by force and are used when needed. There is a way to treat the economy by developing uh, job opportunities through the local industrial production sectors, the transport, communications, and this will determine the amounts of supply and demand for the dollar. So they're talking about going to legitimate private sector businesses. I mean, what else can you say? It says uh, here he points out that um, there's about a billion dollars are sold weekly. I think that's pretty much what they, what they used to do, about 200 million a day. And there's ignorance about the process and cooperation with the private sector to solve this problem. So in other words, they're saying that people didn't realize that there is a fix to it. Like I just said, the transport sectors, the uh, industrial production centers, communication centers, all of these things will uh, help with the supply and demand for the dollar. And here it says that the political advisor to the prime minister, he's the prime minister's advisor, uh, political one, Fadi al shamari predicted last Wednesday that, quote, the dollar will not continue to rise continuously and the state is working to strengthen the dinar, noting that within a short period, the dinar will be stronger and will witness the collapse of the black market. I mean, what else can you talk about there? All right, I mean, it's amazing. Um, the collapse of the black market, raise the value of the currency, make the currency stronger than the dinar, just like Al Sudani has said, just like Al uh, Al Alak has said, the project to delete the zeros is still a, still on the board. It still exists. So there you have you have it. And then today we see we see a couple other little things that come into play. It says here that the uh, the Iraqi government with the with its program is open in its economic and trade relations to all countries of the world. I don't know, that's an announcement, is it not? We're open in its economic and trade relations to all countries of the world. That's unbelievable. 
right? He stresses that the Iraqi government within its governmental program is open in its economic and trade relations to all countries of the world in light of the urban phase that Iraq is witnessing. Uh, the Port of Fah goes on to say that it, the region, it, due to its geological, uh, geographical location and the crossroads of trade routes between east and west, which Iraq considers the largest project uh, on the path to development, the development road project, uh, is nothing but um, out of this world. And who's all involved? The Arab League. Uh, if you look up who the original owners of the Arab League um, is phenomenal. I think I missed this part, though, just so you know. So he says, for his part, the president of the Arab Academy for Science and Technology and all of them, who are they a part of? Organizations of the League of Arab States. So obviously the region is completely on Iraq's side. Everybody's ready to go. And uh, let's see. Lastly, today some electronic news, electronic digital transformation news. It says Zane Cash relaunches the Western Union service. It says, in light of the rapid development in the world financial transfers and a renewal of the company's commitment to providing safe and reliable services to its customers, Zane Cash has relaunched the Western Union service after updating and developing it. Things have changed, different. What do they got? They have uh, ISO or SWIFT compatibility. My assumption would be probably so. And let's see, the customer verification feature has been added, 3D scanning. Um, they go on to say that Western Union service will be activated for all customers gradually and will not require the customer to provide us with any information or documents. The part about this is the word activated um, and then gradually. We move down to the agricultural bank. Uh, today announces what? Activation, so they're both using the same words, MasterCard, deposit service says activating the MasterCard services and simplifying the procedures to accomplish the requirements of the digital transformation sought by the central government for their government program. They're talking about that today. So all of these things um, in a brief reca recap uh, are just phenomenal pieces of information. Paint a picture. If you have to rewind slow the thing down and pay attention because the chronological order of getting us to where we are today uh, just goes to show you that um, Iraq is opening for um, international business to the world and they say it, those are their words. I just bring you guys the news to the best of my ability and I'm stoked that you guys are all here with me tonight and thank you very much. For all you new folks, please hit that like button and subscribe if you will please. Uh, if you enjoy the content of course, you can also uh, provide a donation through those specific things in our details in and about a militia man and crew. Easy to find, easy links. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Once again guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.